schools, from their inception and by design, have attempted to make a difference between literacy and non-literacy in our society. Will this be the case for today's students who need to be literate in a digital world? Is there a difference between what schools have always referred to as literacy and the electronic literacy our students are faced with today? My buddy, Mark Warshower, who is at UC Irvine, where I did my sabbatical, offers a definition of electronic literacy by first dividing this vague concept into four concrete categories as follows. Computer literacy, information literacy, multimedia literacy, and computer-mediated communication literacy. Are these valuable skills for our students? I expect Island Graff thinks they are. She created the virtual land baroness Anse Chung and apparently became the first real-life millionaire created by the online social networking community Second Life. And after watching so many people here in Japan endlessly staring at their cell phones while riding the trains, although I was not surprised by a recent article in the Japan Times, I was certainly astounded to learn that five of the top ten best-selling books in Japan started as cell phone novels. Yes, I'm talking about books printed on paper and sold in bookstores. But they were first written by the lightning fast thumbs of young authors using cell phones and making the stories available for others to read on the tiny screens of their cell phones. So let's look a little more closely at the definition of electronic literacy. The first category Warshower mentions is computer literacy and he defines it as comfort and fluency using hardware and software. Are students comfortable with using computers and other devices to complete academic tasks? Can they store, retrieve, and share their work? Are they at ease with the electronic equipment available to them, the equipment that has made many of the tools and machines of the past obsolete? We in education need to realize that these devices are here to stay, at least until they are replaced by the next wave of devices which seem to keep getting smaller and more powerful. Warshower's next category is information literacy, defined as the ability to find, analyze, and critique information available online. The internet represents the greatest collection of information humankind has ever created, but can students find information that is useful and reliable? Yes, they can do a search and find 45,000 sources on any given topic, but can they find what they are looking for, and will the source be accurate, and will they be able to form and expand their knowledge and put what they found into their own words? The next category put forth by Warshower is multimedia literacy, the ability to interpret and produce documents combining text, sounds, graphics, and video. Although many teachers lament the movement toward visual delivery of information and away from text-based sources, there is no question that our students are bombarded with more and more multimedia-based information every day. But can they make sense of it, and could they create such a product that would deliver a comprehensible message? Warshower's final category, computer-mediated communication literacy, is defined as Mastery of the Pragmatics of Synchronous and Asynchronous Computer-Mediated Communication. Synchronous communication tools deliver messages instantly, like chat and instant messaging. Asynchronous communication tools include email and online discussion boards, messages that are sent and responded to at any time. With the astounding growth of distance education, these tools are providing learning opportunities to students wherever they are and whenever they want them. So, do we consider these electronic literacy skills to be valuable skills for our students? Do we believe these skills should be taught in our schools? And if they should be taught in our schools, when should we start and who should teach them?